I think we can't actually, you know, because we're recording this remotely, that we can't actually do like a coffee chink, you know, like, yeah, you know, hit our cups against each other. Well, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to find some more coffee sound effects. I kind of burned through my entire library of two uh, in the last one we did. So it's this not is... even, it's, 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 it's not even coffee today. I, I don't drink coffee at all. So the name's a bit of a misnomer. It's a hot chocolate bar today. I... I'm currently drinking tea. I, I drink coffee mostly to keep myself awake during the morning commute. That's that's my relationship with coffee. No, I like coffee. So, so it's, 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 it's all lies. It's not the Spodcast coffee bar. It's the anything else coffee. It's anything else than coffee bar. <laughs> I love the fact that it's taken as, you know, this is our third coffee bar episode. I love the fact that it's taken as this long to to admit this. Like we've been lying to our listeners about coffee. I don't, I don't even like coffee. But it, it gives us a name for this episode, though, doesn't it? Like deceit of the coffee bar or something like that. The, the, the only thing I know about coffee is that people have very strong opinions about what is good coffee and what is not. Because I was sent out um, after starting a new job um, a year or two ago and told to bring back coffee. And I brought back um, Nescafe rather than Kenko, and I was put to the sword and brutally killed to death by all the coffee drinkers, because apparently it's muck. Listeners, please hold on a moment. I'm just going to sack Connor. (laughs) And I think that might be the best intro we've ever had. I'm not even doing your listening to. I'm just going with that. And welcome to the Spodcast Coffee Bar. I'm Johnston, and with me on his last warning, I have Connor. Hello, Connor. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, so while you tuck into your Nest Cafe, I'm going to. Uh, is, that, is, 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 that, is, is that is that is that really a thing? I, I, oh I, yeah. I don't... Oh okay. I mean, I, I I don't do instant coffee at all. I, I cannot stand it. Like, I don't <laughs> like instant coffee. I do like sort of coffee from. I mean, I've got a coffee grinder. It sounds so pretentious. I actually feel bad for admitting it on a podcast. But yes, I ha- I have a coffee bean grinder and a coffee machine. Um, and I have a subscription to coffee beans. So a lovely company, Rave Coffee, who I'm mentioning so I can tag them in a tweet and hopefully they'll retweet us. Um, they they send me a couple of bags of very nice coffee. Oh God, I'm advertising. I'm doing podcast advertising. I vowed <laughs> this this podcast would never have adverts, and I'm doing it by accident. <laughs> uh, so yes, we're um we are here to do another podcast coffee bar episode where we kind of we go in without a plan and we just talk about books, audio books, TV, Doctor Who. Big finish. It's a nice wide range of subjects, but in kind, instead of focusing on a certain thing, instead of going, we're talking about Missy this week, or we're talking about the Fifth Doctor this week, um, we're just going to sort of generally chat about things. Um, and I think there's a bit to chat about because you've been reading lots of books, I've been reading books, listening to audio books, and reading comics. I, I generally don't do comics. I don't kind of get on with comics really uh but i have been been reading some recently which i'll i'll go into a little bit more later um so yeah it's, it's just going to be a bit more of a broad discussion uh and it's an excuse to throw in the odd coffee sound effect every now and again and that sort of thing um 
So, so Connor, what? We'll start with the question we always start with. What have you been listening to? We're we're mainly an audio drama podcast, I suppose. So let's talk about some of that. What have you been listening to? Yes, I've been I've been listening to a couple of different things. Um, the big one at the moment is I last year started doing an Eighth Doctor marathon, starting from uh, well, I watched the TV movie in the run up to the anniversary um, of uh, you know Doctor Who's sixtieth, um, and I watched the TV movie just as part of my watching around that um and then i started from storm warning doing a little eighth doctor run um i did just after christmas did the charlie pollard box set which comes between the first two series so i did series one must have been around december time which is storm warning through to um that one with the brigadier that i've forgotten the name of min yet in hell then i did the charlie box set just after chris set uh, the, the charlie box set just after christmas and the new year and then I've just started into the second series, which is Invaders of Mars through to Neverland. Um, so I'm a couple of episodes into Invaders from Mars, and I'm enjoying it a lot more. I, I, I A lot of these I listened to when I was working the first time around um, and didn't really pay an awful lot of attention. It's nicer to be able to you know, pay closer attention to these and get a bit more out of them. Um, but I'm on Invaders from Mars at the moment, which is glorious camp pulpy fun um and a wee bit bizarre and a wee bit mad and it's got simon Pegg in it so that's quite cool um so yes i've just started into that and i'm, I'm quite enjoying i'm i'm a sort of whenever i got into big finish it was off the back of night of the doctor and i listened to doom coalition so i've always liked that sort of later eighth doctor you know the the leather jacket and time war era and more recently i've started to pivot around sort of that slightly more classic tv movie style of of doing things with him um i quite enjoy the magic and wonder that that little early era has so i'm really enjoying listening through these at the moment um i've also been doing it's i was it's, it's a little bit out of left field for me i've been listening to prince harry reading his uh, autobiography spare um through spotify because i get that i i i I've been making use of their free audiobook each month or their free 15 hours. So I'm about halfway through spare and it's fascinating. Um, it's, it's not one that I'd say I would enjoy as such. It's not something that I'm, you know, listening to to get any real like pleasure or anything out. I'm not the biggest fan of the Royal family in the world, but this is, it's, it's genuinely fascinating listening and I entirely appreciate the level of, uh, of honesty that he has put into it or, or what is coming across to me as honesty. That's totally out of the ordinary for this podcast. <laughs> that, that, that is, yes. Like, oh, wow, that's that's serious listening. Um, <laughs> just just going back to your Eighth Doctor thing, I I do like the the earlier stuff. That I, I've often heard the Eighth Doctor in that earlier era described as Tigger, like the Tigger Eighth Doctor, and I think that's just yes. perfect, kind of hyperactive, in love with adventure and hasn't been soured by members of his family being murdered by Daleks and time wars and silly little trivial things like that. Yes. Um, and it, it, it's great, that just sort of sense of wonder, sense of adventure. And I, it is kind of a shame that we've lost that in the ongoing stuff. Uh, but I do like the fact that we do revisit that era every now and again. Um, I guess, I suppose, really, the turning point with that was Zagreus. Um you know, you've got the big speech about all of the Doctor's heroes turning out to be villains and disappointing him, you know, Omega and Rassilon and that kind of thing. Um, I, I think that's a real turning point. I, I do think there's something really special in those first couple of Eighth Doctor runs from Big Finish. Um, and I think the run that you're on now, Invaders, to Mar Invaders from Mars to Neverland, is just excellent. And I... I love Neverland. If somebody said to me, pick your favourite big finish ever, Neverland would certainly be my immediate answer. I might sort of think about it and come up with 17 other stories, but Neverland is the one that instantly pops into my head. I think it's it's just a damn great Doctor Who story, um, and it's a brilliant season finale, and that cliffhanger is genuinely excellent. Uh, that really was the sort of the early big finish team firing on all cylinders, and it, it it set up so much. You know, it tied in nicely to a lot of the Dalek stuff that was going on. It gave us uh, what led into the Divergent Universe and beyond. 
uh, it gave us Gallifrey. Uh, the Gallifrey spin-off series came out of Neverland and Zagreus. Um, and sort of, you know, Zagreus brought Braxiatel into the Gallifrey stuff as well. He'd been a Benny character up until that point. Um, so, yeah, the, it, it, it's sort of... Neverland and Zagreus are arguably the most seismic stories at Big Finish, uh, like the biggest thing they've ever done. And it it really did, and still does when you listen to it now, actually, feel like the first big series finale for a series of ongoing adventures. Um, yeah, it, it, it's an absolutely fantastic era, and I'm I'm heading towards visiting it again myself sometime relatively soon. I think I've, I've been threatening this eighth thought to marathon. I think ever since we started this podcast, but no, I'm nearly there. Honestly, I enjoy doing. I I, I did it with the seventh Doctor uh, Ace and Hex stories, um, where I I sort of split it up into series and listen to it, you know, and take a few weeks break and listen to other stuff and then come back to it. And I think throughout my first, so I I had a. I, I changed jobs a few years ago and, and um, suddenly had a half hour commute, you know, each way in the morning and evening. And I did, I started sort of, you know, being able to structure my listening into those. So I did the Seventh Doctor Adventures on the way home um, and did the, sort of work my way through the um, Ace and Hex stories and loved that. That was brilliant, you know, having a, a new series of Doctor Who to look forward to every few weeks with those characters. Um, and I'm I'm loving doing it with the Eighth Doctor stuff now, and that's going to be my plan, sort of to keep up, you know, the whole way through the Divergent universe and into the post Divergent stuff with Kerry's, um, where you can split that down into a couple of different series, and it'll it'll keep me going for a wee while. So um, I'm I'm looking forward to get getting back into those. Yeah, I'm I'm still unsure how I'm going to do it this big Eighth Doctor marathon because it, it's. It's huge. I think I've got pretty much everything in there, a few exceptions. You know, I've not put um, Master Planet Doom in there, for example, purely because I only listened to it a couple of days ago at the time of recording and that kind of thing. But um, yeah, I'd, 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 I like to think I've got sort of a complete chronology of the Eighth Doctor's adventures. Obviously, there are big gaps and that kind of thing. Um, I like to think there's an awful lot between sort of Stranded and the Time War. I like to think that we've got a lot of ongoing Eighth Doctor stuff to enjoy first. But um, yeah, I, I think it'll be a good listen. I think Paul McGann's an excellent Doctor, and I think we've we've been beyond lucky that we've managed to get a whole still ongoing era out of him from Big Finish, and he's. In many ways, he's always going to feel like, or certainly as long as he's doing Big Finish, he's always going to feel like my current Doctor. I feel more of a connection to the Eighth Doctor than I do ongoing stuff on TV, to tell the truth. We're going back this year, of course, as well, to the Living Helen stuff, which is, for the time being, you know, his ongoing, you know, like, like we're going back to, you know, like his ongoing um, stories, you know, where it's, this is where the strand that started with storm warning and continued through the Lucy Miller stories and dark eyes and whatnot is now, you know, we're going back to that now, which after, you know, a year's break to do things with Charlie and uh, audacity. So I'm, I'm glad we're getting back to the present day at doctor. Um, and I'm looking forward to those sets uh, when they come. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's that's going to be a, a nice little highlight of this year, I think. And even when we dip away from that, you know, the stuff with Audacity was excellent, but it's Liv and Helen are still the team that I'm, you know, I, I want to hear the most from. Um, and I, yeah, well, I've I've I, I I settled down a few years ago and just you know tried to work out who my favourite Tardis crew were. Uh, it's it's the Eighth Doctor, Eleven Helen. Like I, I, I just adore hearing their adventures. It was they were the first I heard when I started getting into Big Finish. Um, you've had three or four really great series with them through Doom Coalition, Ravenous, and Stranded, and then into this standalone area. Um, so I will never say no to hearing more of them. And you know, if you told me before Liv and Helen were introduced that Big Finish were going to come up with companions that were at least as good as Charlie and Lucy. I wouldn't have believed you. I, I, lightning struck twice there. How on earth have they managed to make it strike another two times since? Do you know how long they have been his present companions for now? 
it's got to be a decade. It's coming up on 10 years. And yeah. it doesn't feel like it, which is a real testament to how good they are. And that, it, it, you know, it's a lot of adventures as well, a lot of stories. We've had three, well, three complete series with that TARDIS team. Plus, we had Live for the majority of Dark Eyes as well. Yeah. Doom, um, Doom Coalition was 2015. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, what a great team. Uh, really, really enjoyable. But. That's kind of why I want to do this Eighth Doctor marathon because I want to hear all of it. I want to hear Charlie. I want to hear Lucy, and I want to hear Liv and Helen and everything else in between as well. You know, I'm going to do the Mary Shelley stuff, and I'm going to do Audacity again. And yes, uh, yeah, you know, I'm going to go into the Time War. It'll really make stuff like um, companion piece pay off. You know, where you're. you're You've you've listened to the whole era. You've had Lucy and uh, Molly and Liv and Helen, and then you get to go back. You know, Charlie. This episode where Charlie Pollard comes back um, in the middle of Ravenous, and jump forward to Bliss's arrival as well. Yeah, yeah, um, that'd be a lot of fun. Um, also, yeah, the uh, the spare audio book. That's not one that would I'd immediately think to go to, but um, it's, I can it's imagine a, it's interesting. It is interesting, and it's sort of you get the impression that he has sort of he, he says very frequently, you know, that he he wanted to put his side of things across, and Buckingham Palace wouldn't let him that sort of thing. This is, I think, is you can get a sort of sense of relief that he's getting to set what he imagines the public record should be, you know, like things from his point of view that were reported on and you know, were not accurate, he is now getting the chance to to put right. It's 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 a strange lesson. I am glad that he himself read it because it would be very odd to hear it anyone else doing it. So it's less I'm I'm not considering this like an audiobook. It's 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 him telling the story of his life um and explaining things, I think is is the big takeaway from it so it's definitely worth listening to like i say i'm not a fan of the royal family um heaven knows you don't need to be to listen to this um fans of the royal family will probably not enjoy listening to this but um it's it's absolutely a worthwhile listen and um as i say i'm only about halfway through i've uh, where am I up to? Um, sort of into getting into his military career, maybe coming towards the end of his last tour at the moment. So, um, yeah, very, very worthwhile listening, and it covers a very wide range of, um, you know, it's not entirely focused on his relationship um, with the British press, um, or you know, it's not entirely focused on his relationship with the family. It's got a good range to it. Um, which is uh, which is very good. Yeah, it, it it definitely sounds like an interesting one to go to, and I think that no matter what you do think of the royal family, I think we're probably in a similar boat when it comes to opinions about that. But um, he's probably the most interesting person to listen to talking about it. Uh, I suspect, though, any point of view you get, you're going to get sort of overwhelming bias that. I'm never going to not question sort of the validity of what's being put in any kind of memoir like that. I suppose. Oh, abs- no, ab- absolutely. He, he, there, there's a there's a part of it very near the start where he's very careful to say that his recollection of places is good and you know people that sort of thing, but his recollection of the, the exact words that have been said in certain situations is not all there. And you know he does he does say you know that anything you read here. You know, don't take it verbatim. You know, take it with a, a pinch of salt, sort of thing. Um, he's telling it as he recollects it, not necessarily as it a hundred percent was, but it's more sort of about his impressions of things than um, the exact memory, or it's 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 exact as his memory can be. He said, but it's um, it's more, I think, sort of about his impressions of of things than an actual historical record as such. That's. That's fair enough, and I guess that really that's the perspective that absolutely anything like that's written from. Um, it's just how how honest you want to be upfront about it, I suppose. Yes, yes. Um, uh, again, uh, like 
it's definitely better to listen to this in his voice as an audiobook, I think, than it is to read the book. I have flicked through the book. I don't have it, but I have flicked through it before. And it's a it's a great big chunky volume, you know, something like this where you you can listen to a few chapters of it is, in his voice is, is a much better way of taking it in, I think, than than it is to read the book, believe it or not. What have you been listening to and 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 reading in your comics? So, um, I have never, ever, ever dipped into, uh, well, certainly not since Disney came along and refreshed everything. I've not stepped into uh, the Star Wars expanded universe really. Um, and when Disney sort of said, right, well, we're, we're shuffling a lot of stuff off into this Legends canon and we're basically starting again and keeping it manageable. And it's a good idea because Doctor Who canon continuity, whatever you want to call it, can be all over the place. And it works because it's a show about time travel and I've always kind of brushed off anything inconsistent in Doctor Who as the monk messed with it. Um, whereas Star Wars isn't about time travel and it doesn't have a meddling monk and all that kind of thing. And it got contradictory. You know, there was a series of books that contradicted another in a comic that did all that kind of thing. So I, controversial opinion maybe, but that's perhaps because I wasn't so far into it. I thought creating the sort of Legends canon and then the new Disney canon canon, I thought it was a great idea. And it gives, it gives you know the creative forces behind Star Wars the ability to um, pick and choose. You know they can nothing is relegated to Legends permanently. Stuff's being brought over. Stuff's being referenced. Um, I occasionally play Star Wars: The Old Republic, which when I started playing it was canon. It is now Legends. That's fine. Um, there've been a few references to it throughout various things, I believe, but. Ultimately, you know, no no harm done. But I thought, right, I want to get stuck into, you know, new Star Wars canon and a lot of it's been um, done, in, you know, in book form, obviously, uh, and audiobooks as a result. Um, and I'd heard that Star Wars audiobooks were very, very good. So I thought I'd give it a try. So instead of just dipping my toe in and trying one thing, I decided to go for The High Republic, which is this sort of massive, sprawling, multimedia sort of event. It's it's kind of what Doctor Who was aiming for with um, Time Lord Victorious and Doomsday, but it's done on a much bigger scale, and I think it kind of gets everything that the Doctor Who ones got wrong right. Um, so it started off, I believe, with... A group of writers, some of whom you know you will have heard of, Kevin Scott, who's done a few big finishes, books, and so on, Doctor Who stuff. Uh, he's involved with it. He's kind of one of the leading voices in this group of writers. Uh, they got together and they planned it, and it's set two hundred years before uh, the prequel films, and well, mostly two hundred years. It kind of dips a bit further into the past as well, and that sort of thing. But what I'm listening to currently is about them. Um, and it's, it's, it creates a whole new cast of characters and there are a lot of characters to get your head around. I actually ended up buying the character encyclopedia, which I think really is meant to be a kid's book, but it's actually quite useful when audio booking and a character's mentioning, you know, oh, I don't remember who that is. And you can flick through and you've got a visual reference and bits and bobs about them. Um, so I've started on this and it, if you go online, like everything else, there are a few different sort of listening orders that you can go for. There's a chronological order, but the story isn't told chronologically. It kind of does what the Star Wars films do and starts with the middle era and then it goes back to an earlier era. Um, so it's you've got phases. Uh, so phase one is what I'm on now. Phase two, I believe, dips back into the past and then phase three kind of picks up strands from one and two and continues them a few years after phase one. So it's been released in these three phases and they kind of cover a slightly different timeline. So I'm on phase one, I'm on the first one and um, I'm 
not doing everything. There are kids' books and there are kids' comics and all that kind of thing. I'm not really bothering with them. But what I have found is you get the basic core story out of the three main novels in each uh, phase. So I've done those. And there's then sort of young adult novels that kind of, to be honest, they're not far off. So I've been doing those as well. Um, and then I've picked up the main line of comics and a couple of what, what they refer to as adult comics, like spin-offs of that. And I've found a timeline on Reddit and I'm sticking mostly to that. Um, but I'm doing something quite interesting. I've bought the books and I've got the audio books on Audible and I'm kind of jumping between. So when I have chance to read a chapter, I read a chapter. When I'm commuting, someone can read it to me on Audible. And I've never done this before. Uh, and I think it's actually working quite well. Um, I've, I've always sort of thought maybe it's a bit of a shift and I should just listen to an audio book or I should just read a book. But I'm finding that jumping between the two is kind of working. Um, I, th- I can't remember. They announced uh, a slate of films a while ago and some of them were going to be like set after the recent, you know, the the, the sequel trilogy and, and um, there was going to be a Mandalorian film, that sort of things. Am I right in saying there's going to be a film at some stage as well set in the High Republic era? I think that I think they might have announced that. I can't remember. I'm not sure about a film. To be perfectly honest, I'm not reading too heavily into what happens going forward because I'm in phase one of three at the moment. So I don't really want to know what happens or what else is going to be. Yes. Um, for spoilers' sake. However, I think the upcoming series, The Acolyte, is is High Republic. I think. Uh, from what I can gather, and that's a Disney Plus series that I think we're getting later this year. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how much is being discussed, how many details are out there, and that kind of thing. But the impression I get is that yeah, that's going to be somehow linked to it, or will feature characters from it. Maybe it'll be set a bit later, and some of the younger Jedi are older. I don't know, but. Um, I, I I will be watching that definitely. Um, it, it it's great though. It works. It really does work. It, it's you know the writers are obviously in very close communication with each other. They've obviously got a story very clearly mapped out. The cast of characters is excellent. They've really sort of dug deep into everybody on the Jedi Council and other Jedi's and what they do and. That kind of thing, you know, the the politics is there, the Senate's there, um, and the the most interesting thing about it, I suppose, is there's no there's no Sith. The Sith aren't around at this point at all. They're sort of in their thousand year obscurity. Um, so the threats come from elsewhere, and it's much more about the Republic expanding and sort of piratey types not being too happy about this and fighting back and all that kind of thing so it, it's it, it's a very very rich galaxy you know it, it's as rich as the films you could argue more rich than some of the films actually um but it, it really plays with the idea of well you know we saw the republic kind of failing in the films um what does it look like when it's succeeding you know what's what's the jedi's purpose when when things aren't disastrous um and that's kind of what's what's going on here at its core uh so there's an awful lot to follow there's a lot to pick up on like i say i've had to buy the character encyclopedia just to use as a reference guide every now and again um but i'm finding i'm really enjoying the comics as well and as i've said before i don't particularly enjoy comics usually i don't really enjoy reading them um, but these, I think it's because I'm familiar with all of the characters going in, having got through a few of the books. Uh, these seem to be really, really good. It, it, you know, it's it's just another another perspective of the story. There's a lot of stuff that all happens at the same time. So you'll have the main book, something happens, and then the other books and comics and stuff kind of float around that. Yes, um, and that's kind of what's going on here. So there's an event in the very first book and the few things that come after that kind of are characters you don't see in the book, how, you know, what happens to them after this event, their experience of that event and the aftermath and that kind of thing. Well, I, I, I remember when it was announced that I always 
you know, when it, when it, when it, whenever the, this the day, I, rem- I remember them. I remember watching the video that they did at the start. Actually, whenever they started making these, um, uh, you know, when they started doing the High Republic stuff, I always got the impression that, that it was doing what Time Lord Victorious wanted to do. Um, I think that was. I think, and th- there were very similar times from what I remember, actually. But I think the Star Wars stuff seems to have carried itself off much more successfully. I think it's because they've got. Disney time and Disney money and mm. Disney resources and that kind of thing. I think that's one thing that's just made it work so well. Um, the the sort of main line books in it as well are uh, on Audible audio books are read by uh, a voice actor called Mark Thompson, who does a lot of Star Wars stuff. Uh, apparently he's done the Throne trilogy as well, which after watching Rebels and Ahsoka, I'm very interested in getting into. I'm going to do that fairly soon. Um, he's honestly he is God's gift to audiobooks um, and these audiobooks they're not just a bloke putting on a few voices while reading the book they are productions there's music there's sound effects they're, they are big they're, it, it, it's kind of what Big Finish are going for with the audio novels um, but yeah this, this Mark Thompson who's performing these audiobooks is just excellent uh fantastic actor fantastic impressionist and genuinely you can feel the enthusiasm about the material like it's very clear just from listening this guy loves star wars and he's doing it every bit of justice he possibly can and he's so damn talented um it's it really is something excellent to listen to you know these audiobooks are 11 12 13 14 15 hours long and the way he reads it, you don't feel like you're spending this much time with him at all. It, it, the whole thing just flies by. It, it, a genuine achievement to make audiobooks that are this good, and I'm actively going to be looking for other stuff that's read by him. And obviously, we'll be continuing with phases two and three of High Republic further down the line. I'm going to have a break in between phases, which absolutely everybody has said is the best way to go about it, sort of do a phase, take the break, move into the next one, because it's like going from the original films to the prequel trilogy. You know, you need that gap, you need that disconnect. Yes, yes. Um, But yeah, it, it, it really does, it feels like this is what they wanted to do with those sort of cross platform Doctor Who things. And I wish, I wish they'd have gone this well. You know, I, I did like Time Lord Victorious. I did like the little that I, uh, heard of Doomsday. I basically just did the big finish set for that one. Uh, but this this feels like it's just so well connected and so well thought out, and it's on the right kind of scale for this kind of thing. Um, and I, I think that's perhaps what the Doctor Who stuff was missing. It was the scale and the number of characters that you can potentially follow, and then making sure that they do all have coherent stories and timelines and that kind of thing um yeah it, it, it's a real achievement and i'm like i say i'm going to be pushing on with it for quite a while um obviously it's not stopping me listening to other things as well i'm still making sure i'm up to date with new big finish releases and recently i've listened to um master planet doom and uh, Sabotage as well, the latest Ace and Colchester Torchwood. They were a lot of fun. I really enjoyed them. Um, so I'm not, I'm certainly not leaving Big Finish behind, but it's it's nice to sort of just do something slightly different, I guess. Absolutely. And it keeps, it keeps the regular stuff that we listen to as well, keeps it nice and fresh. You know, when you come back to it, um, I always like taking a wee bit of a break to do something different because it makes the regular Big Finish listening seem, you know, uh, like coming back to an old friend. Uh. <laughs> yes, I think Big Finish is always going to be kind of old reliable. It's always going to be the, the keystone of any listening that I have planned going forward. But it, I do enjoy dipping out every now and again and just trying something a little different. So other stuff, we've talked about listening. What about other things, reading, then? reading, watching, reading, smelling? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> smelling. Yeah. what have you been smelling like no let's not do that coffee obviously this is this podcast coffee bar and as we've established we're both avid coffee drinkers 
I'm getting uh, hints of uh, hazelnut. And <laughs> I think this one's got coffee in it. You don't say. That's, oh, well, what sort of tea are you drinking? Uh, oh, Yorkshire. <laughs> got to be Yorkshire. If, it, if, it, if it's not Yorkshire tea, it's not worth drinking. I had a, I had a, the, my, my hot chocolate was a Twex hot chocolate. <laughs> oh la di da! Uh, it just it just tasted like ordinary hot chocolate. <laughs> Don't know know, I, 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 I think I think this is a thing. I've never had like a branded hot chocolate that's tasted like the product it's supposed to be. Like Maltesers hot chocolate has never reminded me remotely of Maltesers. It's only ever reminded me of hot chocolate. That's the thing. I got I got a celebrations selection of hot chocolates, and I've been working my way through, and they have all tasted exactly the same. <laughs> I sincerely hope that when you're done, there'll only be bounty left in the box. I haven't touched the bounty yet. I think it's the only one that could possibly taste different. I think there's a Galaxy Caramel one. There's a Galaxy one, and there's a Galaxy Caramel. I'd like to think they taste. I think like I think the Caramel one tastes of uh, caramel, but we'll see. <laughs> I think it'll taste of hot chocolate. I think it'll taste of hot chocolate too. I've been doing a lot of reading recently. I, I recently switched jobs and now work in a bookshop, which is as wonderful and as magical as you might expect. Um, and it has really revitalized how much I read after a few years of slightly struggling with it, just you know, paying attention to it. Um, and I've been looking through the stuff I have been reading recently to try and come up with one I can talk about. And there's only one real choice. It's called, it's a book called The Drift. It's by an author called C.J. Tudor. Um, and it's a, it's a thriller with a little bit of a sci-fi apocalypse taste to it. Um, it's got three, there's, there's, it, there's three different strands um, with three different main characters and, um, you know, and, and it's a it's a different character in each strand. Um, there's one called Hannah. Uh, there's another one called Meg, and then there's another one called Carter. And it's told in that order. And it starts off. There's a Hannah chapter, and then there's a Carter chapter and a Meg chapter, and it just rotates between them. Then, so I it I I took it away on holiday. I went skiing back at the start of January, and I took that with me. Um, just to tie in, it's nice and. Uh, thematically similar it's uh it's a it's set on a mountain in the middle of a blizzard so i i wanted something that was going to fit <laughs> fit my holiday really but this was incredible i was on the edge of my seat when i was reading this it was it, it, because of that structure where it rotates through the three different strands each each chapter sort of builds up to a cliffhanger and you don't get the resolution to that cliffhanger for another three chapters. So you really want to keep reading. Like it's very, very difficult. I know, I know it's a bit of a cliche to say you can't put a book down, but really you can't with this one. You really want to keep reading. It's a very effective way of um, keeping you uh, engaged with it. I, um, it has this way of sort of drip feeding you little clues and hints that sort of just get put in in passing. And it's like it, they've been put in for you to spot, you know, and pick up on while you're reading through um, and it all seems very innocuous until you get one thrown in and it's suddenly like everything tie suddenly ties together and you get the awful realization of something um, that it has been trip feeding you this whole time. Um, really, really first rate world building going on as well, because it's set after some sort of apocalypse that takes a lot from our recent real world history and that it lifts an awful lot of what we experienced during the COVID-19 pandemic and basically expands on that and extends it out until it hits the end of the world. And that's, that's the world that this book is then set in. So it's, it's, it, it feels very, very recognizable as you're reading through it. Um, what has happened to to the world um it's really very very good there's something the, the, the whole central twist to the book and it's 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 like it's the whole central concept it's very difficult to talk about without spoiling it it's such a satisfying read to go through this and realize what's happening i don't want to spoil it for anyone at all i highly recommend um reading this uh go to your local bookshop, get a copy, 
you will not regret it. I absolutely adored it. Um, so that's that's my big that's my that's been my favorite novel uh, that I've that I've been reading recently. It's I haven't read anything since it that has hit me in just quite the same way. I really really loved the drift. Um, but I've also been trying to do some non-fiction, and I I I. I used to be a really big reader, but I always read novels. I very rarely read anything that wasn't fiction. Um, and recently I've been trying to get into more non-fiction stuff. Um, the two big ones that have, or the two that have stuck in my head most that I've been reading recently is one called Pulled Open, which is about dear old Doctor Who. And um, sort of goes through the whole process that the BBC went through of setting up Doctor Who back in 1963. Um, it's written by a man called Paul Hayes. Um, but what it does is it sort of, it goes through the history and every time a new significant figure is introduced, like Sidney Newman or uh, Verity Lambert or William Hartner or anyone, it sort of breaks off and gives them a whole biography of their life and career before Doctor Who. And it's really interesting getting that information because, yes, this is all very familiar territory um, for us as Doctor Who fans. You know, at the at the ver- at the very least, you know, most of us have probably seen an adventure in space and time. But this is all territory that's been covered over a lot of times before, and uh, like you'd be forgiven for thinking there's nothing new you could know about it. Pull the open goes over in very great detail about the people involved as it gives them their biographies. Um, but it, man, it takes a lot of myths as well and sort of debunks them or goes into, you know, how things, I, I, I think it's the most in-depth study, the most up-to-date and it, it, it's, it, it really does debunk a lot of the myths that are associated with Doctor Who's um, beginnings. So it's a really satisfying read. It's written in a really good way in that as i say it goes through the whole process of it being set up and gives you the information on the people involved as they're introduced uh to proceedings fantastic really loved it one i've done in a similar vein as well is called game wizards and that's that's about it's about the beginnings of dungeons and dragons um which um i've i've mentioned a few times on the podcast as being my uh other great love at the moment than Doctor Who. But it goes through the history of of how Dungeons and Dragons came to be, but it really focuses in on the falling out of the two people who made it. It was, it was created by um, a man called Gary Gygax and a man called David Arnson. Um, and they didn't really get on after Dungeons and Dragons was released. They... They, they had a major falling out and um, David Dave Arnson spent years pursuing Gygax and um, his company TSR, the, the, the company that originally published Dungeons and Dragons. He spent years pursuing them through the courts for what he perceived to be royalties he was owed that TSR didn't necessarily agree he was owed. Um, it, that's, that's, it's, that's what it says it's mainly concerned with. Once Dave Arnson leaves TSR and leaves Gary Gygax, he sort of exits proceedings and only comes back in when he comes to sue them. It more follows Gygax and TSR and the rise and eventual fall of 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 uh, D and D and TSR. Um, it's just bizarre. It's it's I I've been fascinated by the history. It's it's really worth looking into because. It's I I at least find it a really interesting story. Just bizarre choices, backstabbing colleagues and and corporate intrigue. It's it's fantastic, and this is a really great book on it. Um, it's a really great account of everything that happened. Um, uh, the guy who's written it, uh, John Peterson, has done the official like visual history of Dungeons and Dragons for uh, Wizards of the Coast who currently publish it. Um, so definitely someone who knows his stuff and um, the best person, I think, to 
recount this sort of history. So yes, books good basically is is my <laughs> has been this section. <laughs> it's it's kind of a shame I've not got a separate I've been reading thing to talk about because as I said I've been reading and listening to Star Wars, um, which, like I say, it's been an interesting experience. Uh, but yeah, that, that's that's a nice little range of things that you've had on the go. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I've been doing. So I've had um, had a bit of surgery not that long ago, had quite a lot of time off work and kind of rediscovered playing games, which was quite nice. I got stuck into some nice little RPGs um, and having never, ever, ever played anything from the series before, I played Final Fantasy IV, which I reckon is probably the first time I've completed a game that's older than I am. Um, and it, it was great. It was by today's standard sort of fairly generic, but when it came out, it was fairly revolutionary in terms of sort of character work and story and that kind of thing. And yeah, it, it stands up as a great little game. And if you like a bit of pixel scrappy RPG type thing, then it, definitely worth picking up. So yes, games. We've never done games before. That's a new one. Played anything good lately? Um, I've been making my way through Baldur's Gate. Um, I've I've had a little bit of a fallow period as far as games go, um, because I got stuck on a part of Baldur's Gate, <laughs> and um, I don't want to start anything else until I've finished it. Um, I'm doing a little bit of a. I've I've started this new Ghostbusters film coming out, and I've been I've started watching through the films again in the run up to it, and they released I think it was 2009. There was a Ghostbusters video game which was effectively the story that they wanted to do for the third film that they tried to make many times and never happened, um, which I played at the time and really loved, and I've got it lined up to play again. I think it's, as far as like tie-in video games go, it must surely be one of the best. It's it's It just gives you exactly what you would want out of a Ghostbusters game. It, it goes... It sort of repeats a few set pieces from the films. Like you go back to the hotel and fight Slimer. He escapes from the Ghostbusters firehouse and goes back to the hotel. So you go there and do that bit from the films again. Um, Step off the Marshmallow Man comes back fairly near the start of the game and you get to do that. Um, but then it breaks away off into its own storyline, um, which is quite good. I think... Um, Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis had written for the game in the same way they wrote the films. So it does really feel like the third instalment of, you know, the original Ghostbusters. Um I've got it lined up to do and I'm 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 really looking forward to, to doing it as part of the of you know part of a run of the films. Um that's 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 it. I'm, I'm really down to play LNR again actually at to a run through of it or you know, a run through it every few years. Play it on the Switch, which the reason I basically have a Switch now is just to play games that I used to play on console. <laughs> um but I, I would love to do another run through it again soon. I do find myself often kind of I always float back to the Switch. I'll disappear, I'll play something else, I'll have a little Xbox spell or a PC spell, but the Switch seems to have become my, I guess, go-to default console, and there's there's an awful lot of really great stuff on there. Um, I've been doing sort of simple stuff as well. I've been playing a bit of Stardew Valley, which I've kind of resisted picking up until now, uh, well, until the last couple of months. And it's it's great. It's good. It's it's a good one for listening to audiobooks, Big Finish or whatever, too. Actually, because it's just it's quite repetitive. It's quite simple. Um, yeah, it, it's a nice sort of background to listening type game. My, my brother and his fiance are getting married um, um, early next year, and they're actually playing through Stardew Valley <laughs> while they talk about planning their wedding. <laughs> That's brilliant. It's the perfect kind of game for. Just that it, it, it's it's background gaming, if that makes sense. You, you don't have to focus yeah. all your attention on it. it it's very casual, and uh, I do like that. Um, I've been I've dipped my toe back into Elite Dangerous as well, which I'll just kind of I'll give a bit of attention to every now and again, but I've never sort of solidly played it week in week out. Which I think to get the most out of it, you need to treat it like a second job, basically. Yeah. Uh, Interesting game, though. 
sort of spaceship sim. You can do what you want. I tend to just like basically being a trucker, just delivering stuff from A to B, or a taxi, delivering people from A to B. Um, it's 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 a lot of fun, but it's never something that I really feel as though I'd need to throw an awful lot of time at, which is good because I don't really have a lot of time to throw at a game. I played a little bit of it, of, of, I was going to say a few years ago, it was a lot of years ago. I played a wee bit of it and had no idea what to do. Like I didn't know how to spend my time, um, which was the main issue I had with that. Um, but I love the idea of there being a proper spaceship sim and I would love to get back into playing it someday. I've always said uh, Elite Dangerous is a game that you need a second computer next year to Google what the hell is going on as you play it. Yes. Um, that, that, it, and that that's absolutely true. You know, that there's, I, I think in terms of um, sort of the community, the game, the gaming community, it's excellent. There isn't anything better. People are genuinely out there to sort of help each other and make the experience better for each other. Um, and, that's great. I, I'm I'm all for more sort of supportive, cooperative gaming. You know, not everything needs to be a battle royale. Yes, but we'll we'll leave gaming there because we'll probably do a podcast about Doctor Who games at some point in the future. That's been oh, discussed. That would be excellent, actually, because I, I, I saw a little bit of um, Lego Dimensions again, and I, I I worshipped at the altar of Lego Dimensions for many years. See, I've I've never ever played it ever. <gasps> I know. Then that is what we should do. We should we should um we should do a let's play of Lego Dimensions if I can get it set up and running again. Oh, that could be fun. Um <laughs> I just want to hark on about how Destiny of the Doctors was the best thing ever in the late nineties. Yes. Um complete with Anthony Ainley's final performance as the master. Keep up slow coach. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and that puzzle one on your phone, I can't remember what it was called now. Oh, Doctor Who Legacy. Yes, that was I brilliant. I loved it. That was brilliant. That was fantastic. I spent hours on that thing. Yes. Oh, yes. Let's do a gaming episode. Yes, we'll do a gaming episode. But that's probably an excellent point to leave this tea slash coffee slash hot chocolate bar episode for now. Yes. Um, I've finished my brew anyway, and if I hadn't, it would have definitely gone cold at this point. But as ever, it's been good to veer slightly off course. I'm glad we got one more of these in before the end of our second series, which is really creeping up on us now. We're nearly at episode 100, and we've, uh, we're going to have a little break and be back further down the line. So there will be a Spodcast Series 3. I think I've just officially announced it. Uh, I have. So yes, um, Spodcast is going to end its series soon. We'll finish Series 2 and we will return for Series 3 um, a few months down the line. But in the meantime, there are still a few episodes of Series 2 left. So thank you for continuing to listen to us, whether it be a big finish episode, a season by season, or me and Connor drinking coffee slash tea slash hot chocolate. Um, yeah, it's it's always good to spodcast and it's always good to do these episodes as well and it's always nice to sort of sidestep and talk about things that aren't Doctor Who, Big Finish and so on. Um, so yeah, we'll leave it there. Uh, so I will say thank you and goodbye to Connor. Thank you very much. And we'll be back for more spodcasting soon. Goodbye now. <laughs>